Let's talk about lumbar laminectomy. It's a very common neurosurgical procedure that we do. It's done for a condition called lumbar stenosis, um, which is where your spinal canal gets narrowed around your spinal cord. And the reason that happens is usually from overgrowth of the bone, disc protrusion, uh, there's a ligament that goes down through the spinal canal that can get overgrown. So all of that just kind of starts squeezing on the spinal cord. Um, you can have it just at one level, and what I mean by that would be like L1-2, or you could have the stenosis at multiple levels, L1-2, L2-3, L3-4. Um, but that is a condition that can cause back pain, leg pain, leg weakness. Um, and if it gets bad enough, we do surgery for it, which is the laminectomy. And that is where the surgeon will make an incision over the back of your spine. This is the back. Um, they'll make an incision. It's going to depend how long the incision is based on how many levels are involved. So um, they'll make an incision. They'll go in and remove this part of the bone. This is the lamina. They, um, they drill that away and just take that piece off. So instead of your spinal canal being like an O, we're gonna make it into a C so that there's room out the back to get the pressure off those nerves. Um, it will depend how long it takes to do that based on how many levels are involved. If it's just one level, probably about an hour and a half, but it could go up from there. Most of the time that is going to be an outpatient procedure where you go home the same day just depends on if you have other medical problems, um, you know, uncontrolled diabetes, lung disease, heart disease. We might have to keep you a night or two, but ideally you can go home the same day. Now you're going to have to take it easy when you get home. You're not going to be able to lift more than five or 10 pounds. We're not going to want you to bend at the waist to, more than just to wash your face, brush your teeth, that kind of thing. You can walk for exercise, but you're not going to want to do any other exercise other than just walking. And you're going to start slow with the walking and gradually build your way up. Um, you're going to keep your incision clean by just taking a shower. You can, um, you can soap up the area, uh, rinse it off, pat it dry. That's all you have to do. You're going to try to avoid wearing any, you know, tight belts, jeans. You want probably want to wear pajama pants, sweatpants, that kind of thing. Um, and then when you come back in four weeks, we'll start talking about maybe you need to go to physical therapy. Maybe you can increase your activity at home. It's, we just do it on a case-by-case -case basis, but you're not going to start doing any more activity for the first four weeks. Physical therapy is not required after a laminectomy. We just do that on a case-by-case -case basis. If you're, maybe you were more debilitated going in, you might need that extra um, instruction on how to get back, or if you had a complication, or maybe maybe you're just not used to exercising and, and you wanna go um, get some advice. So it's not required, but a lot of our patients do have it. So pre-surgery, the things that you can do to help yourself be in the best condition would be eat a good, healthy, balanced diet, um, have your blood sugar under control. If your blood sugar is not under control, you probably are not going to heal your incision that well. Um, stop smoking. That's probably the biggest thing that interferes with our body's abil ab ability to heal. Um, unfortunately, a lot of our patients with lumbar stenosis they can't do a lot of exercise before because exercise is what makes stenosis symptoms worse. If you can get out and walk, if you can get in a pool, I mean, strengthening your core would be good, but unfortunately it's not feasible for a lot of our patients. Um, you sh should expect to have some pain after your lumbar laminectomy. Those muscles have been cut. Uh, so you'll have pain there. You'll also have muscle spasms. We send you home with a pain medication and a muscle relaxer. Um, the first few days, you're probably going to need both, but maybe after the first week, you can stop or start cutting down on the pain reliever. You might need the muscle relaxers a few more weeks. 
Uh, sometimes if you can take anti-inflammatories, we might have you take an anti-inflammatory to help those nerves settle down. But that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis because not everybody is allowed to take those based on their medical health. When you've had a laminectomy, it is best to stay on top of the pain. Uh, so you don't want to wait until your pain is an eight to nine to take that pain reliever. I would suggest taking it more when it's a, a four or five, and then it's, you're not gonna have to take as much and it's gonna work better. Um, a lot of our patients want to brag and say, I didn't have to take any pain medicine, but we give it to you because we expect that you're gonna have some pain. So when you have a laminectomy or any spine surgery, you're having it because you've had pressure on the nerves, pressure on the spinal cord. That pain doesn't always get better right away. A lot of times it does, but I like to tell people it's kind of like the carpet in your house, your nerves are. If you, take, if you have a couch on the carpet, you move the couch, the carpet doesn't come back normal for a while. It's just gonna take a, a while for those fibers to, to look like normal car carpet. And so your nerve is kind of like that. It can take 12 to 18 months for it to completely heal. With that being said, if you're still having a lot of nerve pain, call us, my chart message us, because there are things that we can do to get that settled down.